Good morning everybody. So I've decided like literally like a minute or two ago that I want to create today's video um, a full day of tracking my calories. So not necessarily going to say that I'm going to be eating um, healthy all day long um, but I just wanted to showcase how you can track your calories, still have cake if you want to, um, and still fit it into your calories for the day, um, and still be able to keep your deficit. So, a lot of people think like, oh, they're eating healthy, but they're not losing weight. Tracking your calories is one way to actually find out why you're not losing weight, because even though you're eating a chicken salad, a chicken salad has calories so your lettuce your tomatoes your cucumbers they might be low in calories but the amount of chicken that you're eating and the salad dressing that you're having with your chicken could be the one creating high calories and then you have something else for the day that you might think is healthy but at the end of the day it's just creating a high calorie and you might be going over your calories either to maintain your weight or to gain weight even though you're eating healthy so I'm not gonna say I'm an expert in this um, I still struggle sometimes especially on weekends I don't track my calories because I get too lazy um, so yeah I'm just going to showcase a full day of calories today is a public holiday so I am at home Jace is with me as well. We're going to be doing some baking later as well. So we're going to have some cupcakes. Um, <laughs> just so there's something fun for us to do together. Um, but yeah, I'll be showing you guys how I do track my calories in a day, no matter what I'm eating. And still try to stay at a deficit. So... As you can see, I'm still like in my gown and everything. So I have my coffee this morning. Um, I do track it because I don't drink black coffee. Um, I do drink full cream milk in my coffee. And I do tend to have a half to one sugar. I was at zero sugar like... I think about a month ago but then I started drinking stronger coffee and for me I am um, the stronger the coffee is the bitter the more bitter it is for me so I have to add at least one sugar so the way that I track that is I literally track like one sugar and then about like 20 mils of milk because that's how much I use coffee in general is zero calories if you're having it just with water which I don't. So I've got to track that into my calories for the day. Okay, then I've already made Jace his um, porridge for this morning. All we did is some oats. So I made a bit of extra for me. However, I usually track my oats before I cook them. Um, and I usually cook them in the microwave, but yeah, I decided to just do it on the stove this morning. It's been sitting a little while, so it's a little bit thick, um, but I'll just cook them in water. I'm going to be tracking them um, cooked because I usually track them before they get cooked. And I'll just be adding some cinnamon, some honey, and a tiny bit of slush of milk just to make if it. If you want to stay lower in calories, then you can eliminate the milk um, in your oats. But I love creamy. So even though I cooked it on the stove, and it cooks more creamy than it usually does in the microwave. So I might just change that. Um... I just like adding that little bit of splash of milk, so like about 20 mils of milk should be fine, just to give it that little bit of extra creaminess, um, and yeah, I just add that into my So guys, um, when tracking my calories, I literally weigh everything. I know it's a little bit... We're gonna bake cupcakes later, baby. Um, 
I know it's a little bit of extra work and it a lot of people might think like oh my word if you want to be tracking your calories correctly and you want to have the ultimate results from a calorie deficit you need to know your portion sizes if you know how much calories is a cup of oats then you can write down a piece of paper but the app is so much easier to use. Um, so what I didn't let you guys know in the intro is that I use MyFitnessPal to track um, my calories. It's the most used calorie tracking app as it has a ton of um, foods already stored in the database. So... They, you might get one or two foods, especially in South Africa, that you might, because um, it, it has a barcode scan as well. So you can literally scan the barcode and it'll bring it up and it'll give you the calories for that specific product. Um, especially in South Africa though, there are some foods that you might not be able okay. to find. Uh, there are some foods that you might not be able to find and then you're going to have to read the label and just try and track it that way. But to write everything on a piece of paper at the end of the day, it's going to be worse than just opening an app and tracking it. So, I'm going to be having my oats now. I'm going to start by weighing. I usually, like I said, I usually weigh my non-cooked oats and then cook it. However, I've already cooked it because I've already made Jace his um porridge so yeah I'm just going to track it with cooked so I literally weigh all my food as I've mentioned so I'm just gonna put it on real quickly all right so here's the oats I usually have oh, I'm missing I can't do this one-handed I usually have 50 grams of non-cooked oats but as you can see that's really little so i'm gonna double that because usually with anything um like this it expands when it cooks so i'm going to do a hundred grams of cooked oats and i'm gonna just see because i generally know what my portion size is Okay, that's about 100 grams. That looks right. So that's about 100 grams of cooked oats. Excuse me. I then usually do a little bit of honey. You usually do about a teaspoon. I eyeball it now. So if you don't want to eyeball it, you can literally measure. I also do cinnamon. Also do about a teaspoon of cinnamon. I more or less know my my measurements already, so I don't really measure it. And then I just do a splash of milk. Yeah, that's a bit more than 20 mils, but more or less just a splash about 20 mils, between 20 and 30 mils of milk. Um, and that's my oats. Doesn't look so appetizing now because it's a little bit cold. So I'm going to just pop it in the microwave. And okay, I've just put it in the microwave. And there you go. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Now, I'm going to show you um, the tracking of each meal. I'm going to be showing you the tracking of each meal. I'm going to be doing like a screen recording and then just adding it after the slides. Um, and a tracking of each meal. So this, you'll see how much the calories are. I can't know out of my head, even though I track it like almost every day. But you could always add a scoop of protein powder in here, make it like a chocolate oats. Then I would leave the cinnamon out because I don't know how that would actually taste. Um, or you could add some berries in here or anything like that. However, I like to keep it plain because um, it's less calories, number one. And number two, like, even though I add more foods like berries or anything like that, I'm still going to get hungry later.
because I know myself, when I start eating in the day, then I just can't stop eating. So I generally do an intermittent fast up until about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I go until 12, which is lunchtime. Then I skip the oats altogether because when I start eating in the day, it's like it gets my metabolism going and then even though oats is filling and it should hold you for the rest of the day, no matter if I have this plain bowl of oats or if I add other things to the oats, adding other things is more calories but it still will make me want to eat an hour to two hours after eating this bowl. So that's where the intermittent fasting comes in that I actually don't feel hungry up until 11 12 o'clock because I haven't started eating for the day and a lot of people say yeah but breakfast is your most important meal and so on so forth and if you don't eat breakfast your body's gonna go in starvation mode all of that stuff is bull because what makes you lose weight is a calorie deficit so if by skipping breakfast because you're not feeling hungry like, do not skip breakfast if you're hungry. That's the main rule that I stick to. If I'm feeling hungry in the morning, like today, because it's only 9 o'clock now, I'm going to eat my breakfast. But if I feel like I can go another two hours without having meal, I will. I'll just maybe have another cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Um, and then I'm fine. If by skipping breakfast helps you create a better deficit for you at the end of the day, then do that. Then what I usually do is I have a bigger lunch in the day to like by 12 o'clock, if I push it to 12, then I'm really starving. But then it's like on a morning that I've been really busy and I didn't have a really chance. I didn't have a chance to, to eat. Um, so then I'll push it to 12, which is my lunchtime, and then I'll have a really big meal at lunch, and then I'm fine until I get home. So it all depends on person per person. If you like snacking, many little snacks in the day, then you got to like budget your snacks, like maybe six meals a day. you got to budget those like six meals to like that much calories for the day. If you want to do it like how I'm doing it, that's the way I create my deficit because if I don't feel angry in the morning, I don't eat. I don't force myself to eat, although I have in the past because in the past it was always, you shouldn't skip breakfast. It's it's not good for you, this and that. It's complete utter. If you have your last meal at 7 o'clock the previous evening, it's still in your system, it's still working in your system. And if you're not feeling hungry in the morning, don't force yourself to eat because you're just going to start eating and you're going to feel uncomfortable, you're going to feel full and you weren't really ready to eat. Like, just don't. I do that because I create a better deficit for myself and yeah, it works for me. So you've got to find what works for you. So yeah, going to enjoy my breakfast now. And I'll check you guys at my next meal, whether it be a snack or lunch. Okay guys, so I'm opening up my fitness pal now. Um, so I've already actually tracked my sugar for the day. I have 1,340 calories that I can personally eat per day. So for the oats now, I'm just going to scan the barcode real quick. Because it's so much easier. Alright, so it brings it up as half a cup of raw. But obviously my oats were cooked. So 25 grams. Yeah. I'm going to then scan my honey. Okay, so I'm going to change it to the one gram. And then about a teaspoon is about six grams. Okay, and then I'm going to scan the full cream milk. Full cream milk has slightly more calories, um, so I'm going to put it at 30, I think, because I splashed a bit more. 
and the cinnamon. Okay, it's already set, it's set at a tablespoon, so I'm going to change that to one teaspoon. Only six calories, however, it does still have calories, so we still need to track it. And that's the oats. There you go, you can see my nutrition for the day, my protein, my carbs, and that's it. Okay guys, so it is lunchtime now. It's 12. So I had my oats at about 9 this morning. And I'm now starting to get hungry. Uh, we made the cupcakes already, but I haven't had one. So I might just have one tonight. I don't know. Last night I made like a stew. It's like a venison, venison meat. Bowl. So I'm probably just going to have some of that. Um, because I haven't prepped meals. I'm probably just going to have it on a sandwich. So, bread. But, um, yeah. When this is where meal prep gets so important. Because you, if you've prepped meals, you just take one out of the fridge. And then make, um, heat it up, eat it. But when you're so hungry that you can't wait to cook food you grab something quick and easy and that's literally what happens with me half of the time um but if i had like maybe some rice prepped or if i had some baby marrow noodles prepped not even meals but like staples to the meals even prepping that would be easier because then i could grab a little bit of um baby marrow spaghetti and just heat it up and then add some of this on top so yeah um, I do have some salad in the fridge though, so I might just have like maybe one slice of bread just to keep my calories low with a little bit of the stew on it, um, maybe like on a toast, and then maybe just fill myself up with some salad. The weather, it's raining at the moment, so it's very cold, um, I haven't been able to drink my water. I do struggle when it's cold to drink water, but drinking your water also helps you to keep full. So to try to drink a glass before your meal and straight after your meal and then wait a little bit to actually see if you're still full. I don't always do this, so I should actually practice what I preach. Um, but I drink water out of a bottle. If I can just reach, I can reach. drinking out of these bottles, the Halo bottles, they're BPA free. Um, so they are a bit more expensive than the usual still water, but then because they're BPA free bottles, you can just reuse them. And, um, I know a lot of people reuse the normal bottles anyway, but I don't like using it, um, more than twice because they're not BPA free, but these are BPA free. So I use these maybe like for a month, maybe slightly less, and then I buy new ones. Um, but it's just might be expensive for a bottle but by reusing it it's better than going to buy like you know some of these other straw bottles what i personally don't like drinking out of so yeah drinking your water can also help you to stay full so i'm actually going to try and finish this bottle of water because that's literally how much i've gotten down today and it's now 12 so jace he got treated to a Happy Meal, so willpower, I didn't get myself anything from McDonald's, but I really did want to spoil him today, and he's got like a nice Happy Meal, and he is currently, Excuse the whole mess, movies, toys everywhere, he's currently sitting on his dad's beanbag, watching some YouTube, and eating his McDonald's. So yeah, let me just prep my lunch and then I'll show you how it looks like afterwards and then you can see how I've tracked it. Right, so I've toasted my bread. I, I usually use butter, margarine, um, but I am stopping that because it's just unnecessary calories you don't need. I remember when I was in school, I used to not eat butter on my bread, and so I thought I'm going to start with that again, 
because it's just unnecessary calories. I do, however, like my mayo. This is a reduced oil mayonnaise. Okay, so I use this one. Stephen hates it because he says it tastes funny, but anyway. And then this is the meat that I made last night. It's like venison with a little bit of sauce, so I'll show you how I track that. And then I've just got some, some butter lettuce. Some tomato and a cucumber. So I'm gonna make so I'm gonna make my salad and I'm just gonna have like literally a bit of mayonnaise with the meat on it on my bread and I'm gonna have a side salad just to fill me up. Um with regards to the sauce in the meat when you cook it, like it's a little bit more difficult to track that, but I will show you um on the screen recording of how I track that meal. Um, there you go, that's my lunch. So it's one last toast with a little bit of mayonnaise and the meat. And then a side salad just to fill me up. So yeah, let's track this meal quickly. And then you can see how much, you'll see at the top how much I have left. And that's how much I can eat left for the day. Before I track real quick, this is the sauce that I used in the meat. So it's literally all that was in... The pot with the meat was the meat, two onions, and the sauce. So, I haven't tracked this before. So, I'm going to scan the barcode and see what comes up. But there are the details. So, we'll see how this tracks. And then, I'm just going to eyeball it to say there was about maybe two or three tablespoons of the sauce. Um... I went in it, so we'll see how that tracks. Okay, so so far I've only eaten 300 calories. So we're going to check my lunch real quick. Okay, I'm just going to add some more sugar because I did have another cup of coffee earlier. Okay, let's add food. Right, I'm going to be searching for venison. Now, you're not always going to find something that has a green tick. So, you must just find something that's close to it. But there's one with a green tick, so I'm going to use that one. And I only had... 60 grams so it's 0 0.06 okay I'm going to scan the bread real quick okay so now it's giving me grams and it's not giving me slice I obviously didn't weigh my bread so I'm going to go back and I'm just going to get my general classic white bread slice it has got a green tick, so this is generalized. One slice. I'm going to be using this. Then the mayo. They only give me grams, but I used about a teaspoon, which is about 15 mils. Mils equals to grams, more or less. So keep it at that okay now this is the sauce and it doesn't come up with anything like I mentioned earlier some South African foods don't come up in the database so we'll skip that for now okay olive oil one teaspoon was used 90 calories which is actually quite a lot so that's why I use it sparingly and when you put it on your um, salad like yeah measure it vinegar as well and now you could see I didn't come through but um, vinegar is like basically hardly any calories so that's okay I'm gonna save one cup of lettuce Five calories you can see that's why I say lettuce cucumber and tomatoes are generally very very low in calories so you can always top these up in your meals to fill you Okay. 
And there you go. So yes, the source didn't track, but I will see if I can make up for that somewhere else. I'm sure the source does have something, but the source was mixed on with water. So it shouldn't be too much extra calories. But yeah, I've now already gone over my fat, obviously with the mayonnaise and the olive oil. And I always tend to do this. Um, but... I try not go over my carbs and try and stay high with my protein. So we'll see what happens for dinner. Okay guys, so it's time for a workout. I am feeling slightly lazy, so I'm going to be having um, a pre-workout. It's Amino Burn from NPL. I've only just recently started using this one. I actually haven't tracked it, um, but I don't think there's much calories in here anyway. Um, so I think I'm just going to have half a scoop today because all I'm going to be doing really is a cardio session. It's going to be Zumba with compound movement sort of vibe, but yeah, it's going to be mainly cardio. So I'm going to need a lot of energy because I'm feeling a little bit bleh. And uh, it's 3 o'clock now, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to get a Zumba done. I think it's about 50 minutes, the Zumba, so I'm going to need a little bit of energy. Okay guys, so I have 643 calories left to eat today. Um, what I did do uh, that I haven't shown you here is I've added a... Okay, I'm supposed to add another sugar because I did have another cup of coffee. So if you can see, the reason why you even have to track your sugar, because three teaspoons of sugar is already 49 calories. If you don't track that, then it doesn't, obviously, you're not tracking correctly. And that could be one of the reasons why you may just slightly go over your calories. There also is, okay, I see, I think I might have removed it. But uh, there's a section where you can add your exercise, which is here. And then um, you see strength or cardiovascular. Um, I don't generally add my exercise, but if I really wanted to. So cardio-wise, um, and you do, there's, oh dear, there's Zumba. And if you do Zumba for, say, 45 minutes, it gives you that, that's the amount burned. If you add that on, so that's how much Zumba I'm going to be doing now. Um, then if you add that on, it pluses at the top there. If you see on the top line there, my goal is 1,300 calories. My food I've eaten is 700. However, I've burned 500, so I can still eat 1,100. So I generally don't like adding the exercise because even though it's 500 calories that I can maybe eat more, I want to find out if I can eat the whole day just on those calories, even if I've exercised. Um, if I tend to overeat and I go into just like a slight minus of 10, minus 10 or minus 30 calories at the end of the day, and I have done cardio, then I do add it on. And then I see that, okay, I've done so much of this or so much skipping rope or whatever the case is. You can go, there's all the exercises that you can add. There's boxing, uh, everything, the canoeing, everything that you can really do, dancing in general, everything, fishing even. <laughs> so um, all your exercises are there. Um, and then I just add that and I'll be like, okay, but I burned 500 calories and I was only in a minus 30. But then when I added my exercise, I must have been like at a plus 400 that I could still eat, which I don't eat, which creates a greater deficit for me, which lands up. Okay, that's just my child in the background playing. So excuse that. So it creates just a greater deficit for me. So it lands up me. Like if I, there is a day that I didn't exercise at all and I did go into a minus 30, it balances each other out eventually at the end of the week anyway. So anyway, what I wanted to do now is the pre-workout. I'm going to put here about snacks. Um, and I'm just going to scan the barcode. I do take it with water. So yeah, one serving, a serving size says, yeah, it's 10 grams. Let me just have a look on here. Uh, 
half or one is slightly 10 grams, approximately 10 grams. So one serving is 10 grams. However, I'm going to be having a half a serving. So I'm going to make it a 0.5. Half a serving is 17 calories. So it does have a little bit of calories inside them. And even though you might think that, you know, you shouldn't track them or it's no need to track them. Clearly, it shows you that 17 calories is 17 calories. At the end of the day, that 17 calories could cause you to be in a surplus of your your calories. So it is good to track everything. Alright guys, so for dinner we went to some friends and we had dinner there so that's why I didn't really room much and I just took a little video of the plate of food it was rice and chicken um, and a king so I did not take my scale with me and I obviously didn't weigh my food so I'm going to be just eyeballing it we had some Rice. Okay. What I wanted to say earlier, there's a lot of green text here. So what I wanted to say earlier, and I can't remember if I did, but when you're looking for something, the best is to go with the green text because they have been very far um, from my fitness pal. So there are quite a few, and I don't recognize any of these brands. So I'm going to go look there's a rice royal basmati rice one cup at 150 grams that seems more or less right 2.2 cups at 160 grams I would presume that is dry rice like uncooked rice because that's a bit steep for a 0.2 cup so I would presume that's uncooked rice the soil basmati rice, one cup seems about right for cooked. So I'm going to go ahead and take that one. Then it was chicken. Now it was chicken pieces that had fallen off the bone. So I'm just going to go with... Okay, this is my history. So let me just search that real quick. Okay, grilled chicken, chicken spread. A lot of green ticks here. Hmm. Okay, so I think I'm just going to go for like rotisserie chicken. Let me just have a look if that has any. It's got grams. I just want to compare real quick so like I would more or less say I had 100 grams that's 200 calories if I go to grilled chicken and I do 100 grams there that's 88 calories I'm gonna go with this one because I would rather just do a little bit more calories, um, reserve it for a little slightly more calories um, than usual because obviously I'm not knowing exactly what was in. So the other things that was in there was like mushrooms and onions and stock cubes. All those things are very low in calories and just add to flavor but and other spices as well. So obviously I'm not going to be tracking those separately because I don't know how much was in my plate specifically so I'd rather just bargain more on the chicken like here than not at all so it's still got my 17 grams of protein and carbs and fats and all of that so I'm just going to add that and that's basically what I'm going to put 350 calories I still have 260 calories left that I can eat let me just see here I did have another cup of coffee over there with dinner or 
before dinner. So I just added another spoon of sugar. I still technically have 244 calories that I can eat. However, I don't need to eat them. I'm probably going to have another cup of tea or coffee just before bed. So I'm going to add another sugar. Tea, rooibos tea is also like no calories. It's just the milk. What I did want to say is that I've already reserved a cup of milk for all my coffees and teas for the day. So, so far, did that even, yeah. So far, there's four, maybe five, and then that should be ample for all of my coffees and tea for the day. So, I've got 244 calories left. I don't need to eat these. I did also do Zumba, so I have a little bit more calories that I could eat. I don't need to eat them, which means I'm in a great deficit as long as I've eaten over a thousand calories for the day, which is fine. So that is that. Alright guys, that's the whole day of tracking calories done and dusted. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a little more knowledge of how to track your calories. Um, I might be doing another video soon on just showing you how to use my fitness pal. So yeah, I'm really showered, fast. And I'm almost ready for bed, so I'm going to have my last cup of tea or coffee and track that as well and get to bed. It's back to work tomorrow, so hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.